We find purpose in the simple things. Under the spring sun, we plant, we garden, we sow, we build, we cook from the land, and we learn to live with the earth. Every day is simple, but we find immense purpose in our life on the land. Living in harmony with nature, we have found that we can move beyond sustainability and live a life that gives back. A life of regeneration. And in the act of caring for the earth, the landscape cares for us. The animals seem to know the secret to finding happiness. In mulberry season, they stand at my feet, patiently waiting for a snack. This is their favourite time of year, when they forage for berries everywhere. We're always learning from the ducks to seek out this joy every day. In the winter, they sit on a warm rock and ruffle their feathers to the soft sun, and in the summer rains, they splash and play in the puddles. Like a duck, we're learning to seek awe in the simplicity of life. They teach us that wonder is found by connecting to the seasons, the earth, and nature systems. Each day as we work to regenerate the rainforest, we feel the hope of a better future rising within us. In each tree planted and ecosystem nurtured, we sense a tide turning. With our help, the landscape is returning to health. Down by the water, you see it all clearly. This is a place where our work is starting to show. Rainforest trees grow tall and a sea of hoop pines are returning. Young coolamons are thriving and native bees dance from lily pilly to lotus. This is where we come to sit and witness the return of balance. Here you can see the change that the sheep and goats have made to this landscape. The clumps of invasive lantana, cow cane and camp laurels diminishing fills us with the energy of the forest. The flood washed away this land, but life is subtly returning. Nature is hungry to find balance, and tiny inputs like the goat's care, seeds scattered or weeds pulled gather momentum. They begin a chain of growth. Nudged in the right direction, nature is finding her way back to health. Black cockatoos dwell overhead as they return home to sleep in the old hollow trees. Their great wingspan twists and glides between branches. They nestle their young here up high in the safety of the forest. We view this valley as a little pinpoint of change. The black cockatoo's song tells us that the future can be shifted through simple acts of nurture. If we apply this understanding to all aspects of our life, the potential of immense change appears before us. This is regenerative living, a way of being that steps beyond sustainability, always giving back more than we take, it is knowing ourselves as an integral part of nature, seeing the trees and animals as kin, 
an understanding that each of our actions is woven within this interconnection. It is living as if the seeds of the future are at our feet, guiding our path towards a regenerative world. In our life here, we always try to live regeneratively, and we write all about this in our book, The Art of Living with Nature. Each chapter has what we call practices, which can be easily applied to anyone's life. My favourite are the regenerative practices, which are all about living regeneratively. We write about going beyond sustainability and finding wonder in every moment. You can pre-order our book now, and that would really support us. These practices have inspired the way that I create, always giving back more than I take from the earth. I collect secondhand tablecloths and they're normally stained and broken and lacking the love that they once held. They are still so beautiful under the layers of stains, so I find a use for them that lets them be appreciated as much as they once were. At this time of year, there are so many predators awakening. There is a deadly brown snake that often slivers past and baby goannas exploring the world for the first time. The chicks are still so small, so we have to be very careful with them. They spend each morning and afternoon with us in the garden, but in the middle of the day when all the predators are about, they play on the studio floor. It's so cute to watch them invent games and entertain themselves. Carefully snipping around the waist, I try to find a use for each beautiful part of the design. Normally I have less waist than this, but unfortunately this tablecloth was pretty rough so I had to avoid a lot of broken parts. This practice feels so meaningful to me to find a way for sewing to give back rather than just consume resources. This is something I actually really struggle with. I moved away to study fashion and loved it so much, but there was always this major question weighing on my conscience. Can fashion ever be sustainable? I still think about this all the time, and I think that the answer is no, because fashion only exists under capitalism. The term fashion is associated with trends or the concept of what we wear and whether it is fashionable. Fashion means the continual changes of style, or this rotation of trends that has been invented to make us feel bad about ourselves and to make us consume more and more and more. This is why I think that this practice of creating a top from old waste moves beyond fashion. I am creating something that extends the beauty of the hand embroidery and doesn't abide by trends. This way of sewing considers the earth and ourselves and is much older than fashion itself. This is creativity. Sewing your own clothes takes days and it's hard work, but I think that this connection to what we consume is so important. It lets you understand each step of the process, and afterwards I always appreciate everything that I own so much more. It lets me look closer. I notice a beautiful seam on a secondhand shirt, the details of a hand embroidery, or I remember to think of the person who created what I wear. To honour this tablecloth, I'm using my vintage sewing machine, which creates a connecting stitch that was often used in these old embroideries. I got this machine secondhand really cheap, and I think it's my best vintage score ever. I normally only add a few seams, because it's really hard to use and the threads often snap. But I've been playing with the tension and readjusting the thread, and it's working so much better now.
I believe that this is regenerative sewing. Seeing an unloved, stained and broken tablecloth turn into a top that I will cherish forever. Caring for the earth is so important to us and we're always trying to learn from nature. If you also think it's really important to do something to protect our planet from further environmental damage, stick around until the end. The sponsor of this video is someone we're really excited about sharing. They're a YouTube channel and organization doing really incredible things for the earth. Excuse you, not for you. You only get the rotten ones. You've got chocolate all over your lip. None for you. No. <laughs> Do you want me to try to find another rotten one? You got mulberry stains on me! Hey! Like a duck, the key to my heart is also food and nothing compares to a meal from fresh ingredients straight from the tree. It is an incredible feeling to eat food that you see grow from a sapling to a tree or from a flower to a fruit. We planted this tree a few years ago and it has grown to be so grand and nourishing. This return to a simple way of thinking is so important to us. The knowledge of understanding where our food is grown is such a huge part of this. Food production is so complex, and growing our own food lets us consider the transients of life compared to the permanence of waste, encouraging us to be responsible for each of our actions. Now, for all things in life, we try to act as if our own hands farm the food that we eat, sewed the clothes that we wear, or mind the energy that we consume. To live as if our hands carry the weight of our waste eternally. The garden teaches us the need for understanding and reciprocity, teaching us to return all the gifts that we are given. We made this compost from all of our food scraps, and now it goes back into nourishing the earth. Soon, this garden will grow food that will then nourish us. The cycle continues on and on. The butcher bird swoops down, collecting worms in their beak. From them, we learn that a garden reaches further than its plants. It extends outwards into the environment and deep into the earth. So we've created a synthesis of systems, animals and plants all working as one. The chicks learn to eat bugs at our feet just as the butcher bird does, mimicking the artful complexities of nature. Obviously, chickens scratching your garden can be super annoying, but we've found that it can be really great too. They create a natural compost and nurture the soil. So when the garden needs a break or rest, we bring in the chickens to clear it out and scratch everything.
We also have a worm farm which converts our food scraps into amazing humus, breeding so many worms. I love antique sewing machines and also that I love tiny little cute things. Don't I, Colin? You're the perfect example. But I went to an antique shop and I found, I guess, the combination of these two things, which is, can you go down? You can go down. Which is a tiny antique sewing machine. And it, it would work, it used to work, I think it's from the 1930s or the 1940s. And it it's for kids and it would have worked back in the day, but it is not in working condition now. So I got it quite cheap because of that. But I want to try to restore it. I don't know if it's going to be possible. It's pretty rusty. But I want to see if I can get it working. So I don't really know much at all about restoring sewing machines, except that this one was pretty not working when I got it. And I had to put it into this table and cut this huge hole in it make the whole base and now it's great. So I have that small bit of experience. And then everything's very rusty, which isn't what you want. And it's missing a needle. And I don't know what type of needle it would take because it's always so important to have the right size needle otherwise everything stops up. But I have worked out a few things. And the first one is that it's a chain stitch machine, I think. So it only has, the thread goes in here and it has you in the bottom. I can't find any manual for it on the internet. I can't find anything about it on the internet. So it's, it's just gonna be a guessing game. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna try to get the major bits of rust out. I'm gonna use some WD-40 and hope that that works. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start by just taking it apart, I guess, and seeing what the damage is inside, how bad it is, because it's quite rusty on the inside, but maybe it's not too bad. Maybe it just needs, you know, a bit of love and it might just start going again. But for the job, of course, I've got tiny screwdrivers for my tiny sewing machine and tiny little apprentices, which are my little chicks. <laughs> that rusty on the inside from what I can tell. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put WD-40 on it and give it a bit of a scrub, I think. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll see if it works. Moonbee, how did you sneak in? Don't eat the plant. Moonbee still fits through the railing to sneak inside, so that's cute. As long as you don't eat any plants. So I took it all apart and I sort of sprayed everything with WD-40 and it seems like it's going really well now. Like it, it's moving really well. It's making the right noises and stuff. So I'm pretty excited. But now I think the next problem that I have is working out this tension. Cause this, this spring doesn't have anything. It was just sticky taped in there. So I need something to hold it down. I guess some sort of little bolt. Okay, so this is my least favorite place in the whole world. This is where we keep all of the bolts and it's always pitch black in here no matter the time and you always spot snakes and it just terrifies me and I'm starting to think that I don't think we're even gonna have a bolt that size because it's so tiny anyway so I don't even know why I'm here okay this one's so close but still way too big but if I had something a little bit smaller and then I could twist it on like that then that would hold the spring down and then this would be the right tension hopefully Okay, I'm going back into the snaky bolt den because I could not find it the first time, but I was so close, so now I'm feeling hopeful, so now I'm gonna keep searching in this scary spot. So I cannot find a bolt that size anywhere, 
So I'm either going to buy one or I'm wondering if I can take, like there's one already in here and I'm wondering if it can do both the jobs. I'm not sure. I'm going to test it out. Am I going to do this? Okay. Okay, I need to find a bolt. Okay, so I have come to a bit of a dead end with that bolt, but it's okay. I don't think the tension is that important. I think I can just leave it for now and work that out soon because obviously I need to find out how the rest of the machine runs before I worry about that. But the next job is the needle, which is probably what I'm most worried about because machines are so finicky with what kind of needle they need and I just can't find any information about what type of needle this machine wants. So I do have a lot of different types because I have a lot of different machines, but I, I just don't think any of them are actually going to work, but I may as well try. So <laughs> I will just try them all out now. Well, this was my best bet at a needle. It's the smallest needle that I had and it's way too big. So I think it definitely takes some sort of specialty needle. It's so close to working now though, I think. But if anyone has any advice on how to, I don't know, fix a machine <laughs> and if I'm doing anything wrong or it, how to get the really big rust off, like the WD-40 was good just to like get all of everything moving, but I'd like to get the rust off, but I don't know if that's possible. But if anyone knows anything, please let me know. It's a confusing world. I'm not a mechanic and <laughs> I don't plan on being one anytime soon, but I'd like just a bit of an idea of how to fix this. Thank you so much to our patrons for your ongoing support. You always inspire us to plant new trees, make new art and create new videos. If you can, please pre-order our book through the link in our description. The music in this video is by Rosemary and Garlic, and you can find her links in our description too. We wanted to thank Planet Wild for sponsoring this video. We cannot recommend them enough for those of you who don't want to wait around for someone else to do something about the production of our planet. Every month they have a new project which rewilds the planet and protects nature and reverses the damage that humans have already done to nature. Planet Wild documents their work for impact and transparency in monthly videos. All of their work gets financed through a community which anyone can join who wants to support the protection and future of our planet. We've already joined it ourselves because we were just so excited to find someone who is doing such amazing things to protect nature. In their videos you'll learn a lot about the Earth but also see what Planet Wild are doing to protect it each month. In one video Planet Wild are saving a baby lynx that was caught in a trap and brutally separated from its mother. And in another video, Planet Wild are equipping civilian firefighters so that they are able to protect their land. You can check them out and see for yourself.